Namaste. Welcome. Welcome to our noon meditation, to the last Sunday of the year. Let us begin with a meditation, closing your eyes and focusing at the sun center, turning inward. Oh, great spirit, saints and sages of all times, of all places, O oh, ye pathmakers of old, most beloved Lord divine in all of thy names and all of thy forms, that which we know, that which we do not. All of ye beings of the air, the earth, the fire, the water, the ether. Most beloved ancestors of our bloodlines, our spiritual lines, our adopted lines, of our marriage lines, of our friendship lines. Om Shri Baba Ji Namaha Om Shri Lahiri Mahasaya Ji Namaha Om Shri Teshwa Ji Om Shri Paramahansa Yogananda Ji Yanamaha Om Shri Sarkuru Shali Ji Yanamaha Om Shri Goswami Kriyananda Ji Yanamaha All ye powers that be. Namaste. From the point of the divinity within each of us, we bow to you. We ask that you come forth today, that you pour forth your blessings upon us as we meditate, as we lift, as we work to ascend. Bring your head to the left with a double exhalation. Bring your head back to the center. Begin to watch the inhalation and exhalation of the breath, allowing the breath to breathe through the nostrils. Three long, deep inhalations and exhalations.
Now use the sipping breath, sipping through your mouth as if through a straw. Draw the energy from the limbs of your body to the trunk of your body. Again, using the sipping breath, draw the energy from the trunk of the body to the spinal column. From the base of the spine, draw the energy up to the sun center. Now move that energy as a golden ball of light out in front of you. And sweep around your entire body, moving to the left. And do this two more times. Feel that golden ball of light expand until you are comfortable. Now focusing the attention at the sun center, the Agya Chakra. Move your awareness from the room that you are in, ascending as high as you are able. of the house, of the continent, above the earth plane. No stress, no strain, just keep ascending. You have reached the place you are able. Stop for a moment. Ascend a little more. Now you have come to the high place. place where all of the helpers are, where all the meditators are, the place where you belong. In front of you, you see a path, and this path leads you up a mountain. But before you go, call upon the divine Call upon your Ishta Devata to join with you. The two of you ascend upward with ease, halfway up the mountain. You enter a grove. The grove is lit as if by full sunlight. See in front of you a shrine glowing with light. You and your Ishta approach the shrine. And as you watch, you see that your Ishta becomes one with the shrine.
the light of your Ishta, the blessings of your Ishta are in the shrine. Enter forth. Light is brilliant. You see a pond. And a waterfall feeding that pond. And at this moment, become aware that this is special. This pond at this moment in time, this waterfall at this moment in time. will remove the blindness, will remove those things which prevent you from seeing, from seeing the reality. The commitment to your own enlightenment, the courage to taking the step, You walk into the water pool. Immediately your shoes dissolve off. As you walk towards the waterfall, your clothing dissolves away. You stand under the light. The light pours down upon you. Washing away all of the tiredness of the body. Washing away the hurts. The heaviness. Cleansing the body. Cleansing the mind. Cleansing the memory track. Feel your entire being cleansed. As your body becomes lighter and lighter, it may wish to ascend of its own accord. Allow this. The cleansing is deep within every cell of your being. Washing away the hurts, the difficult karmas,
your inner eye. Look within to see if there's any special part of your body or your memory track, your mind, your soul that needs to be cleansed, that needs to be healed, to be vivified. Allow the healing light to enter there and to do so. And when you are ready, walk away from the waterfall of light and feel yourself walking above the pool of light, just slightly above. Your entire being is vivified. You feel first as you walk new shoes upon your feet and new clothing upon your body. You continue to walk above the ground as you leave the shrine, turning to bow to the light, feeling the presence of your Ishta filling you. Walking out of the shrine, you are in the grove. Your Ishta is in front of you. See your Ishta in a blue circle of light. Brilliant blue circle of light. You feel a silver cord between you and your Ishta. From the heart of your Ishta to your sun center, your Ajna Chakra, the point between your eyes. As you look up, your Ishta becomes brighter and brighter and brighter. Your Ishta smiles upon you. And you feel the blessings of love and compassion flowing to you. Filling every cell of your being. Remember, each time you think of your Ishta, remember to turn up the light. To see your Ishta within this blue globe 
and to turn up the light. Feel your Ishta smiling upon you and smile back. And when you are ready, return to the high place with your Ishta, to the meditation place, and sit in this meditation place for a few moments. And we will meditate together. If you wish, you may join with me in chanting this mantra. The Om Mani Padme Hom, which draws forth from your soul compassion and sends it forth into the universe. You and your Ishta together we and our Ishtas together. Keep your mind focused at the sun center. Om Hold this feeling state in your mind's eye. Hold it in every cell of your being. Now sitting, face your Ishta. Feel your Ishta smiling upon you. And in the hand of your Ishta manifests a beautiful round mirror. Within that mirror, you see yourself reflected
You see the light that you are. The light that you are reflected. Know that you are that. You are the goodness and the brilliance you see in the mirror. That in this mirror held by Arishta, through this mirror held by Arishta, you can dream your dreams. You can dream your way to happiness, to contentment, to enlightenment. You can see the path which needs to be taken. Feel that mirror shine back upon you. Joy. Ananda. 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 Feel the light of the eyes of your Ishta pouring upon you and reflecting in the mirror that which you are. Ananda, Ananda, Ananda. See yourself strengthened. See the light that thou art. The jyoti that thou art. The mirror melds into the heart of your Ishta Devata. For your Ishta sees you as you are accepts you as you are, respects you as you are, honors you as you are, sees the goodness that thou art. And from this high place, your journey, your next steps begin. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Hold your attention there. You are that. You are the goodness that you see within yourself. Thou art that. We have reached the time of the year where we are all beginning, I hope further than just beginning, along the path to preparing for the next year, to preparing for what we need to do. We are in that sacred three day period after the sun enters Capricorn. 23rd, 24th, 25th of December. The period when the veil between this realm and the other is thinner. One of the most sacred times of the year. The time when you have the opportunity to say, ah, I've cleansed myself. I've vivified myself. I've let go of all of those things which are holding me back. For that's what the ritual was this morning, a ritual of purification, of cleansing. 
or we can't see when the glasses are dirty. We can't see when the mind is this way or that way rather than in balance. We need to cleanse, to lift, to vivify, and to see our own goodness. You need to see your goodness, your strength, your wisdom, your skills, to know the next step, to know that which you wish to do as we move into this time that by the Gregorian calendar will be the year 2022. By any of the other calendars that we measure, time is much, much longer than this. But we'll go with a popular mode today. The popular mode for the time. It's the last Sunday of the year. The last day that we focus here at the sun center. Now the sun is in Capricorn, it's moved into Capricorn, which says that it is a time where you need, it is wise to look at your skills, to look at what you have cultivated over this last year, over all of these years. What have you cultivated? What have you done? What do you know how to do? What has prepared you to come to this moment? Moment in time. To move forward to what you are seeking. We only have this moment. We don't have other moments. But one of the blessings of the earth plane, one of the true, true blessings of the earth plane is that in these bodies that we are incarnated in, we can remember the past. We can see what we hope will be the future. What a blessing. What a blessing. These bodies contain our memory tracks, our memory tracks. And through these memory tracks, ah, we can remember we can reflect, we can use that great technique, Tarka, to see, oh yes, from up here, not from down here, up here. Oh, I see, I'm not a child anymore. What have I learned? How can I use those skills to improve life? Now, at this moment, how can you use those skills to improve your life and thus improve life for all of us? That's what we have to do. Your place here on earth is to make this garden of God a better place. And you make it a better place by being kinder, by being gentler to all that you meet, by softening the angularity of your personality. I have to soften a lot of mine. And, and truly, by letting go of the hurts of the past. Now, they rise, they live in this being. They live in the cellular memory. And so this beautiful healing meditation that we did this morning, this cleansing and vivifying meditation with your Ishta Devata, your chosen form of the divine, will help you. It will help to neutralize those memories that live within the in the body. Those memories of the past that are pain-filled. Those memories of the past that are not easy to be with. Yeah, it's not an easy thing to do. There's no question. It's not easy. It's difficult. We have to neutralize again and again and again. Neutralize the past, the hurts of the past. Why? So that you and I, you can live a more joy-filled life. 
You can live a happier life. You can live a life of greater understanding, of greater self-awareness, of deeper and greater contentment. And that in time, you can understand how you are a part of this. You are not separate from life. You are a part. We are one. We are together with all that is here upon the earth plane and in all the other realms. Now, it's a special time to turn inward and to meditate. For the reason we began with the meditation this morning was to help you to cleanse to cleanse the memory track, to make a conscious effort to cleanse the memory track. Now, once, it's not, once will help. Once will help. Today, a great help. But you might want to do this more than once. You might want to do this every day, to sit down and to ascend to the high place with your chosen form of the divine to ascend into the shrine of healing and to heal from everything that is causing the angular energy of the mind to flow and bring it back to a point of balance. Now, as we enter this week, which we will be entering the new year, the new year 2022 by the Gregorian calendar, we will enter that year. There's a lot of running and ranting and raving that goes on. Try to stop and give yourself time. Try to stop and rest. To be allowing yourself time that you need at this time. Now, many people take what they call New Year's resolutions. People take New Year's resolutions and, you know, 60% of them are broken by the time you get to the end of January. So I'm going to suggest an alternative. And that is today to sit and reflect. And we've been talking this way for the last three weeks or so as we approach the solstice. And now we're in these sacred three days after the solstice. Instead of making a resolution, make a vow to yourself. Now, the vow should not be something like I'm going to go to the gym every day. Or I'm never going to eat chocolate again. Or I'm going to lose this amount of weight or that amount of weight. Now, the vow should be something that is that you can achieve something that's going to be of benefit to you, something that you're going to feel very good and very positive about. So what about something like every day in every way, I will become more and more content. Every day in every way, I will increase my capacity to remember. For what is the most important thing that you can take with you when you leave this life? It's your memory. It's the great, great blessing. It's the great, great blessing that we have upon the earth plane. Memory. You can remember your skills, 
you can see your skills. You have learned lessons from your life experiences and you can apply those to the future. You can say, well, you know, I didn't do this so well, so maybe if I made this change, it would work better for me. You know, let me try that. It's the same way with spiritual practices. You practice and you practice and you practice and you say, oh, well, you know, how is this working? Well, well, okay, it's successful. Or no, it's not so successful. I need to do something differently. Let me do another method. Let me use another method. Not jumping from one to another like a rabbit, but saying, well, you know, I've used this for five years, 10 years, and it's not getting me where I was hoping it would. And if you want to know how you're doing, ask your family, ask your friends. Are you nicer? Are you kinder? Do they think you're more compassionate? Do they think that you've changed in a positive and affirming way? That'll tell you whether your practice is working or not. So I'm saying to you, make a vow. Now, if I were vowing to do everything I could to increase my memory, I'd ask myself, what stops me from remembering? The emotionality of the mind stops me from remembering and from seeing clearly. So if I want a memory track that allows me to see clearly, not a memory track that is filled with this hurt or that hurt or this false impression or that false impression, but one that allows me to see clearly, well, then what do I have to do? I have to neutralize those hurts of the past. I have to say, okay, stop being so emotional. What causes that emotionality to arise? You for you, me for me. They are, it is what we call the red buttons that causes the emotionality of the mind to arise. You know, your brother comes into the room and he says, hey, sis, hey, sis. You know, your cousin comes into the room and says, hello, George. You smell a smell. Somebody walks into your house with a scent on that reminds you and takes you back 30 years, 40 years, 10 years, a couple of days. What are those red buttons that cause your mind to be emotional? And here is a, a deep secret, and some of you really know this. The way that we measure time can cause the mind to become emotional. So as you walk through the seasons of the year, the days of the year, you know, we are in the winter. We've entered the winter this week. We're in the winter. The winter will cause some of you to become more emotional. Colder, the darkness. You go into the spring. That will cause some of you to become less emotional, some of you more emotional. So you need to understand yourself is what I'm saying. Use this time of the year to understand yourself. Get a notebook, write it down, write it on your computer, write it down so you say, oh yes, you know, huh, you know, every time I see Mike, you know, my mind becomes emotional. I wonder what that is. I wonder what causes that. Is it his tone of voice? Is it the way he looks? Is it the way he smells? Is it the words he uses? Now, nothing wrong with Mike. This is a key mystical technique and a key mystical truth. Nothing wrong with Mike. Uh, my guru used to say, that it simply means that there is um, an incompatibility between your souls 
or um, the souls are rubbing against each other at this time. And he also used to say that when you have that, it's a great benefit because it gives you an opportunity to do something about it. You can make the change. So, you know, um, every time you see Mike and he, you, you think, oh, you know, there's a, he's going to say something that's going to irritate me. It's going to irritate, not me, my mind. What does he usually say that irritates my mind? Um, oh, you know, a good one I've noticed among men is that, uh, and some women, some women, but um, people will argue about ball teams, football teams, soccer teams, baseball, basketball teams, baseball teams, hockey teams, and get into really serious agitation. You know, my team's better than yours, you know. Now, you know, sometimes people do this jokingly, and sometimes they're very, very serious about it. Can you laugh? You know, can you laugh about whatever it is that's causing the discomfort? Can you shrug it off? Can you practice ahead of time some phrase that you're going to use, something you're going to do that's going to reduce the emotionality, that's going to demagnetize you, your aura, from having that repeated experience that causes your mind to be emotional. You need to fill up your bag of yoga practices and your insights about your personality and your life and say, yeah, you know, Every time I eat, uh, not every time I eat, I'll tell you the truth. Every time I prepare green beans, I snap green beans. Every time I take the ends off the green beans. Part of my mind always remembers being a little, little girl sitting right next to my granny with a green, a light green bowl after we pick the green beans from the garden and we snap them. No matter where I get the green beans from, it's a long, long time that she's been gone. Uh, 40, over 40 years. And these memories are 60 years old. The first of them. If I snap a green bean and I can see her right next to me, showing me what to do, showing me how to snap them after they're finished, showing me which ones weren't good. That's a positive, strong memory. I want to keep that because with me, I can feel her love. When I snap the green beans, I feel her love. When I eat then the green beans, I feel her love. I feel the freshness from the garden and how she taught me that simple thing. What is it in your life? What are your goal buttons? The buttons that open up your heart, the buttons that open up your sun center. <clears throat> the red buttons are those things that cause your mind to become emotional. Find those gold buttons, the ones that you say, oh, this when I do this, when I walk in this place, when I breathe this way, when I turn inward and I remember the goodness that life has given to me, that my loved ones have given to me, I feel that goodness and I feel that beauty. And so as you walk into the new year, Make a vow to yourself. You have to make a vow that is meaningful to you, not to me. And that you phrase it in a way that you can achieve it. You know, it should always be. It's very helpful when the vow is present tense. You know, every day, or uh, progressive tense, rather, excuse me. Every day, in every way, I am becoming. I am becoming. Not 
I am because some days you're going to wake up and, oh, you know, I'm not quite there at this day. But I am becoming, I am becoming, I am becoming. That will bless you. And you will be able to keep that vow. Make it, write it out, place it in front of you so that you see it and it shines for you. So that everything that you do in these coming moments, in these coming days, everything that you do feeds that vow. Feeds and strengthens that vow. It will give you joy and happiness. It will give you contentment. And it will help you immensely to make a commitment to yourself. Don't tell anybody about it. Don't tell the world. Make a commitment to yourself. Say it and write it and read it and be it in a way that you know that you can keep it and then do so. Next Sunday is a new moon, the first new moon of the calendar year, 2022, January 2nd. And on that day, it is a beautiful day to begin to take your vow, to remember your vow, to vivify your vow through meditation. And so we will join together again here next Sunday, same number, same astral temple, same place. Come again, and we will work together to vivify and strengthen our vows. And now let us close with a meditation, short, short chanting again. Namaste. Namaskar. sitting with your spine erect, focusing your attention at the sun center, a point between your eyes. And let us send forth our blessing, blessings to the world. First, focusing your attention on someone whom you love very deeply and chanting the Om Shanti Mantra. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. And now to your family. Om Shanti, Shanti. Shanti. And to your friends. Om Shanti. 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 And to all of those who have helped you in this year who have helped you in any way. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. And two more times to all of those helpers. Om Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. And now let us send forth our blessings to all of those, all of those beings in all realms. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om. Om.
Namaste. Namaste. Namaskar. I thank you for the blessing of your presence, for your joining today, for your spiritual vibrations, for your uplifting, for your beautiful energy. Remember and see the good that you are. Remember that. Have a wonderful week and we'll gather again next year. Namaste. My deepest pronouns to you and the blessings of the lineage of which I am a part. Shanti.